morning beautiful people it's a stunning spring morning here today and i'm absolutely blessed to be spending it in a field that's almost full of the bright yellow blooming cowslips now cowslips you might know them as cowslops or fairy cups but their latin name is primula varies this beautiful yellow wildflower once upon a time used to bloom and be just as abundant as the buttercup. Can you believe that? But since then, their numbers have massively declined. This amazing bright yellow wildflower, the cowslip, is an incredible source of nectar for the bees and the butterflies and the beetles. Mm -hmm. And it's actually an edible and medicinal mm -hmm. herb too. So come with me and we'll celebrate everything to do with this incredible wildflower. Now firstly, let's start off with the cowslip's name. Where did its name originate from? Well, cowslips originally was cowslops. And why was it called cowslops? Well, that's because this beautiful bright yellow wildflower's name, which is incredibly good to look at, the inspiration from its name actually comes from a definitely not so beautiful source. And that's cow poop, cow poo, cow pat. Because <laughs> cowslips used to grow much more abundantly in cow fields that was of course covered in cow poo so this flower somehow became associated with cow poo which was known as cow slop so this plant was nicknamed cow slop and over time that merged into the cow slips name that we know it by today now the cow slip is related to the famous primrose it's in the same family and you'll find this cow slip flower in between april and may and to identify it firstly if you smell this bright yellow wildflower, it has a very sweet scent. It has a really nice smell that almost smells like the fruit apricot, almost citrusy. The leaves are dark green and wrinkled. They are quite wide, but they're narrow towards the end. The leaf edges are toothed with a light creamy green vein running down the center of the leaf. Cowslip's leaves grow in what's called a rosette. This means that they grow around the bottom of a stem in a circle. The flowers are a beautiful bright shade of yellow and they're bell shaped. These flowers have five petals with small indents on the end of each petal. The flowers are enclosed in a long green protective flower casing and grow in clusters on the each plant. All the flowers face in the same direction. Now something about the cowslip that's really awesome of course is that it's an edible and a medicinal herb too. You can eat the leaves fresh and put them in things like salads or you can cook them like a vegetable in soups or you can eat the flowers. You can make them into a nice tea or you can crystallize them on cakes. But in herbalism the cowslip is considered to have a strong sedentary effect and it was famously used to make a wine and people used to go out every year. This wine was so popular and they'd harvest the cowslip and they drink this wine and this wine was also so said to have sedentary effects too and if children were sick or I imagine especially naughty they would be given a sip of this wine as medicine <laughs> now unfortunately we can't make this wine anymore we can't get out there and collect it all because this flower has declined so much that now actually finding it in abundance is rare because of not just the making of wine but the mass expansion of farming and use of pesticides and things like that massively damaged the cow's lips population and pushed them all the way down in some places almost out of existence and in certain places certain country, countries they grow you'll find that it's actually a protected species of flower for example northern ireland you can't even pick these now, I wouldn't suggest that any of us pick these just because their population has come down so low. In fact, I insist that we all do the opposite. We all love to get out and forage and enjoy teas, but when it comes to set cow slips, let's get out and plant the cow slip seeds and let's really help push this wildflowers back into abundance.
Now, cowslips, just like all wildflowers, plants and trees, are incredibly special and play their own special role in this world. So I just wanted to take a moment to really stress about rewilding. We can all do our part when it comes to rewilding. Just get some seeds that are native to the area around you and plant some in your garden, plant them in pots and plant them where the bees need them. And then every single one of us can all play a role in helping restore our countryside and our natural environments back to how they are meant to be. Because the cowslips is, this population has declined so much that it was once as common as the buttercup. Now you see behind me, when I saw this patch, I was like, oh my God, because I have probably not seen a patch of cowslips like that in years and years and years. And that's where the positivity comes in around the cowslips because their numbers did dwindle so low, but they are actually recovering. And it's people rewilding with these seeds and getting out there into the fresh air and helping the cowslips that's helped push the population back up towards recovery. And of course, they're not yet there yet, so we need to keep going, but they are recovering, so that's some good news. <laughs> Now the folklore and mythology that surrounds the cowslips is especially awesome and it all tends to center around keys and unlocking things but in folklore they also believe that if you infused cowslips with milk and washed your face in it then people would fall in love with you. Lots of these remedies in folklore tended to try and make people fall in love with you but in Norse mythology they believed that the cowslips represented Freya's keys and these keys would unlock the door to some secret room where Freya had hidden the chest of internal knowledge. That's pretty cool. But my favourite folklore that surrounds the cowslips is in folklore, they once believed that if you made a tea or a remedy from cowslips and you drank it, that would create a connection with you and the dead and that that night you would be visited by a loved one in your dreams. Now that's especially, that's that one made me get goosebumps. <laughs> that's a really nice one. I especially love that last bit of folklore because if you've ever had a dream of a deceased loved one visiting you, their dreams are extra special. Now don't despair, if you'd really like to enjoy a tea made from cowslips and uh, experience the sedative or potentially paranormal effects, then you can still have a cowslip tea. Don't go out and plunder the declined population, but you can still buy sustainably grown cowslip online and make yourself a cup of tea or buy the seeds of course plant them out in your back garden plant them in pots and you can enjoy a tea that way in symbolism the cowslip represents death and birth and i think that's quite fitting because the population was so swindled and squished down that it almost did die but now it's definitely rising back again with the help of us and it's a really good example on how if we make the choice and we take the actions, the things that we've done to the countryside and the natural world can be fixed and undone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, all celebrating the cowslip and everything that we know about it. Have a good time out there and I'll see you all next time. Peace. <music>to like comment subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications whenever we upload a video follow us on facebook and instagram and if you're interested in supporting our channel further so we can keep this content being created for free then check out our patreon all the links for everything we just said is in the descriptions below peace